After 1492, we start to see the colonization of the Americas. And we generally start this with Columbus, but of course we have some activities in the Americas before that ever happens. You can look up the Basque fishermen, the fishermen of Bristol. You can look up uh, St. Brennan, Leif Erikson, etc. There's a lot of groups that are probably coming to the Americas from Europe and possibly even from Asia prior to Columbus. But here we're focusing on that one interaction, uh, the Hispanic interaction with the Americas. We're dealing with Mesoamerica. Uh, what's happening is after there's a finding of gold near Veracruz, the Spanish will mount an expedition to Mexico. At the time, the Spanish are on Hispaniola, and they're kind of iffy about what they want to do. Up steps a man named Hernando Cortez, who will say, and by the way, he's really sort of middle management. He's not terribly important, but he basically goes, look, I'm willing to be the first to go over there if you give me some troops. He's looking for glory and status. He's not really doing anything ethical coming out of this. Uh, but the Spanish governor at the time is saying they're going, well, no one else really wants to go. We know that there's a very difficult people in Mexico on this mainland so go ahead and by the way there had been previous expeditions they had all failed for various reasons so that's part of the reason Cortez gets the go-ahead he will go with 300 Spanish troops and you're frequently told that these 300 Spanish troops march across Mexico and defeat the entire Aztec Empire because of their incredible weapons but really that's not exactly the case in fact, what we see is the use of allies, and we have 300 Spanish soldiers, but we probably have somewhere in the range of 200 to 250,000 indigenous allies with them. The reason is the Aztec are not terribly popular. They are known for being rather brutal. Teotihuacan is, of course, at the center of this. That is the so-called Aztec capital, and... The Spanish will enter, they will be run out, and they will reinvade and eventually win. Part of the reason they win, of course, will be epidemic. The population of Mexico drops from somewhere around 50, 35 to 50 million people just in Mexico alone. Really, the Aztec Empire. And within 30 years, it'll drop to about 5 million. So you can imagine that drop. That means that maybe 15% of the population, or 85%, give or take, dies. Uh, we have epidemic where 90% of the indigenous population will die within 50 years. We will also see, after the Spanish invade, a great deal of, coloni of hybridization, excuse me, colonization and hybridization, where we see various indigenous forms, such as at the left, that's a feather painting, a traditional technique used by the Aztec, but here depicting the mass of St. Gregory. And on the right, we actually see a centaur, an idea that the Aztec would have been completely unfamiliar with, used in a painting created by the Ultimi, another people associated with the Aztec, uh, in a church. So, you're going to see the use of different art forms. You're going to see all sorts of interesting scenes. But let's deal with Mesoamerica at this period leading up to Columbus. Now, Mesoamerica is going to be a very interesting area. Following the rise of Tula and Chichen Itza, we will see the rise of Tenochtitlan. As these other small cultures are fairly short-lived. This is going to bring us to the late post-classical period. This is the last period of pre-Hispanic Mesoamerica, really. And we're dealing with 1000 to 1520, give or take. And again, this is part of that dating system that we see in Mesoamerica. We don't see a lot of agreement with it. But this also shows, by the way, in the green, that is primarily Mayan. In the orange, that is primarily Aztec. The Mayans are still here. Just the southern Mayans have basically collapsed in about 900. But we still have Mayan influence. 